Hey, did you know that every single service in Azure has its separate lifecycle? Do you know what it means for your applications and decisions that you need to make? My name is Adam and we'll cover all of that in today's episode of Azure Fundamentals. Stay tuned. Today's objective is fairly straightforward. We need to understand what service lifecycle in Azure means and how it impacts us. The stages that are our focus today are called public preview and general availability. Service lifecycle in Azure defines a process of how every Azure service is released for public use. Every Azure service has its own lifecycle. The process of building that Azure service follows a typical development path. It starts with requirement gathering, followed by development, testing, and when the service is ready for wider use, it's then released to the public. The first release to the public is done by releasing a preview version of the service. At this stage, most of the service functionality is ready, so customers can use it and test it. This stage is called public preview. Think of it like a beta for your service. Public preview is designed to allow customers to experiment with the service, provide feedback, and then for Microsoft to incorporate that feedback to improve the service before the final release is made. When the service is validated, it's then released to the public for the second time this time as a production-ready service. This stage is known as a general availability, in short, GA. You will very often hear people say that the service has been GA'd. When the service is in general availability, Microsoft will keep improving the service and bringing new features in. Those features might land directly in GA, but very often they will be marked as a public preview too. So it's entirely possible to use this service that has been GA'd very long time ago, like this Azure SQL, for instance, that has still certain features in public preview. For example, this geo replication. So you always need to be aware if the service that you're using and the features are already available for a general use, for the production use. From the perspective of the general public, this three stages is all that matters. But it should be noted that Microsoft also has some internal versions of the service before it's released to the public preview. One of these stages is called private preview and it's released to a narrower audience. This stage is covered by an NDA and typically only high profile customers who needed this particular feature, Microsoft employees, MVPs and regional directors have access to these. This stage allows to prove the value and test the service before releasing it to a wider audience. So certain things that we need to note when it comes to public preview, because public preview is this beta service. So it has certain limitations and key things that you need to remember. First of all, very often, if not always, public preview services are out of scope for the service level agreements. So using them for production workloads is not recommended. Additionally, some services in preview are not covered by customer support. Most of the time, Microsoft will try to help but sometimes they simply might not be able to. When the services are released, they are often released to a limited number of Azure regions. They are then released gradually to more and more Azure regions. During previous stages, certain services and features might have limited functionality, so you need to be aware of that. When it comes to the pricing, public preview services very often have different or discounted pricing as the public preview stage is also designed to test and understand the best and the most fair pricing strategy for the service. In rare scenarios, Microsoft might decide that the direction that the service or a particular feature is moving towards is not good and either change this feature or a service completely or even cancel it. So always need to remember about this. But besides the services themselves, Azure Portal also has preview releases can actually access those at any time using preview portal azure.com website. Feel free to check what is coming in Azure portal in near future. If you want to provide a feedback about Azure service that is currently in a public preview or is currently in a GA, you can use this smiley button here to send your feedback. Remember that your voice counts and Microsoft is reading those actively. If you want to stay up to date, you can visit Azure updates website available at azuremicrosoft.com slash updates. On this website, you can find the latest information about Azure products and features that are currently in development, in preview, or currently being released to a general availability. You can filter those news by category or update types. 
If you want to see what was recently released to a production, simply select this filter here and hit filter result. And you will see the latest releases to your Azure services. If you want, you can also use RSS feed here and read all those updates in your favorite RSS reader. One question that I get very often is, do I use public preview features or services in my production applications? Well, yes, I do, but only sometimes. It's a little tricky decision to make. For me, it's a simple question on whether the benefits outweigh the risks and the limitations that come with a public preview service. Sometimes I'm simply willing to take that risk and use the service for my production application, but not very often, especially not for the critical business applications. To summarize the service lifecycle, remember that every service in Azure has its own lifecycle. Every service feature also can follow a separate lifecycle. First stage is called public preview. This is a beta stage for your Azure service that has been released to general public. Remember that certain features can be in preview stages as well, even if the service has been in general availability for a very long time. This stage is designed for testing, not for production scenarios. So you can test and prove the value of the service for your future applications. Another stage is called general availability, and this is a production release of the service. That means the service has all the functionality that Microsoft wanted it to have, and you can use it for your applications. But that's pretty much it when it comes to service lifecycle. All the materials for this episode can be found under episode 39 on my website. Now that we know what service lifecycle means, we can make more mindful decisions about our design and our applications. But for today, we're done. If you like my work, support the channel by subscribing, liking, and commenting. And as always, see you in the next one.